and welcome to Applied Mathematical Finance. So we are in our section on calibration, yeah? calibration of the discrete forward rate term structure model, our big interest rate model. But say to some extent, this is a section on just general aspects of calibration. So what we did was discussing the dependency structure of the parameters. So this is understanding the model. So what is a parameter doing? And also links to calibration is, can you find a fast analytic formula for such a calibration product? So a financial product that is used to infer the value of a certain parameter or certain parameters. So now endowed with these two things, I would like to discuss bootstrapping the forward rate covariance structure from the swap rate covariance structure. And that's somehow the next step, yeah? combining the two that we know that there is a certain special dependency structure and that we have an analytic evaluation formula to be even faster in the in the calibration. Yeah. So um, while for example calibration using brute force Monte Carlo, yeah, change the parameter, reevaluate the financial product, check the error, feed that back to your optimization algorithm change the parameter again. While this takes maybe minutes, yeah, uh, the same approach on a high dimensional solver with an analytic formula takes maybe some seconds. Yeah. And uh, bootstrapping means that the outer numerical optimizer, which is N dimensional, can be replaced by N one dimensional optimizer, so then you are even faster, yeah, say within one second or below. Yeah. And if we have an analytic formula, we could maybe also replace this one dimensional optimizer by the inversion, the exact inversion, uh, so the solution, and then we can calibrate in an instant. Yeah. So you see, um, there is a very long range yeah, between it takes minutes yeah, or could even take hours or it can be done uh, in an instant. So let's have a look at this. So we derived this uh, very nice link between the forward rate covariance structure. So I marked the model parameters related to our model in blue. So this here is my forward rate covariance structure to the swap rate covariances. For example, if we consider the log normal model, we look at ds divided by s. Yeah? That is actually the differential of the logarithm of S. And then I would like to have the integrated covariances. So I take here two different swap rates, one from A to B and one from C to D. So these are actually time intervals. From TA to TB and TC to TD. And then I can check this integrated instantaneous covariances of the log forward rates. And I can link them to the integrated. So there's also here the integral over time instantaneous covariances of the forward rates by just multiplying from the left and the right 
with with a weight, you see that it's still here an equal sign where the weight is actually something that is stochastic. So I have to make an approximation. So I take the weight in zero. So you see there's here the weight in zero, which is then only approximately correct. Yeah, we derived this in a previous session. So that was our analytic formula. So actually we had the theorem here. Yeah? So you see that was our theorem. So why was that useful? Because this here is then, if it is deterministic, exactly the parameter that we have to plug in into if it is a log normal model, a Black-Scholes formula for the Swatchian value. So we had a very fast analytic formula for the Swatchian value. Yeah, so this is the sigma squared, yeah, the Black volatility of the Swatchian multiplied with the time TA. Yeah, so if this is the integral from T0 to TA, uh, and these are the two swap rates where C and D are also A, B. Yeah, there's then is uh, then this is just the um, integrated variance. Yeah, and then I can plug this in into the Black Scholes formula. Okay, but now I am even a bit more general. So this is the covariance of the swap rate. Yeah? So you could say some sigma SAB times sigma SCD times some correlation, which links uh, to the forward rate covariance structure. Under some assumption, I can invert this map yeah? and I can infer now the forward rate covariances approximated from the swap rate covariances. And one assumption is that, for example, the tenor discretization of my forward rates in my model agrees with the swap yeah, time discretizations, so the starting dates and the end dates of the swaps that I observe. So I need as many swap rate covariances as I have forward rate covariances, then I can establish the one-to-one -one relationship and I can uh, invert this. So let's have a look. First thing is that I like to infer the forward rate volatilities from the swap rate volatilities. So leaving the correlation aside under the assumption that the correlation matrix is given. So I have our first assumption that the time discretizations agree. So I observe enough financial products, enough swaptions, and have now the second assumption that my instantaneous correlation for the forward rate, so my rho ij, is um, given. I'm now discretizing my volatility and correlation model, yeah, time discretizing it. So here, everything is still very general in the sense that this here is uh, a function of time and I integrate here over time. So I'm now discretizing the sigma k, sigma l and the rho to be piecewise constant, piecewise constant over one time step, one time step, the time step corresponding to my tenor discretization, so the capital T i's. So I'm assuming this for the correlation function, and I'm also assuming it for the volatility. So I introduce some parameter, sigma LK, for the time step from, say, for example, TA minus one to TA. So this is now my piecewise constant volatility parameter. This should be the approximation 
of the integrated uh, instantaneous uh, yeah, variance of the forward rate LK, if I consider here a log normal model of the log forward rate. So this here is actually just the sigma K of T squared dt. Well, if one, my model already has a piecewise constant function sigma k, yeah, piecewise constant over this interval, then this sigma lk tilde is just equal to the sigma k uh, on that interval, except for a small note. Note that here our sigma lk from ti minus one to ti already includes this time step. Yeah? So um, there is already a factor square root of the time step size. Yeah? So why square root? Okay, because here is um, a square. Yeah? So if you, if you take the integral here, ta minus one to ta, yeah, so then this is, if sigma k is a constant, this is sigma k at t a minus one, yeah, so it is a constant squared multiplied with the time step size, yeah, so my t a minus one. So maybe is as a short uh, footnote here, yeah, so that this guy already contains the time step. This makes it a bit easier because then here in my sum, yeah, so now if this here is piecewise constant and I integrate here over the time, then I get the sum from i equals one, yeah, the interval from t0 to t1, to i equals a, the last interval from ta minus one to ta. So this integral from zero to ta is just the sum where I have the sigma lk from ti minus one to ti and the sigma ll from ti minus one to ti multiplied with the rho kl. So I can represent my integral from zero to ta sigma k of t sigma l of t rho kl of t dt as this sum here i from one to a, and then I integrate yeah, the parameters of ti minus one uh, and ta. So this means that this integral here becomes um, a sum. And now I have the sums over the different combinations of the forward rates. Yeah, so the different k's and l multiplied with weights wk and wl, but the weights evaluated in zero. So my equation is that on the left-hand side, I have the integrated swap rate variance. Yeah, I use now sab, multiplied with SAB, yeah? So sigma SAB multiplied with sigma SAB times TA is equal. So actually this is just an approximation formula, but I can write here equal, yeah? Because now I have passed all these guys here a tilde. Yeah? So I would like to find sigma tilde, which is not the two sigma. Yeah? It is uh, the guy which I find by inverting this approximation formula. Yeah? If I interpret the approximation as an equation. So 
this is equal to take the sum over all combinations k from a to b minus one L from A to B minus one. So my swap starts here in TA. It ends in TB. And inside, yeah, I have forward rates LK yeah, and so on. And now I have all the covariances of these forward rates that lie inside this swap. So my sigma k, sigma l, okl, now with my piecewise constant parameters. So I like to invert this approximation formula. Yeah? This is the formula mapping forward rate covariance structure to swap rate variance. Swap rate volatility squared multiplied with time. Next ingredients is that we had the session where we already studied how does the swap uh, or the swap rate, the value of the swap chain depend on the forward rate. So I have here a swap that starts in TI and in TJ uh, in my other notation now, TA and TB. And we know that only the forward rates that lie inside the swap enter. And we had this nice little relation that I can calibrate. For example, if I would like to calibrate this swap here by just choosing that forward rate, given that I already know the other forward rates that enter into this swap. Yeah, this swap runs from 2, T2 to T4. So the forward rates that enter are the L2 and L3. So these guys enter up to the starting point, the TA. The TA will be the T2. Yeah, so for these two times here. Yeah. So I already uh, studied this nice little dependency structure. So I would like to now follow this bootstrapping algorithm. So on the outside, we go from left to right. We step over the A over the different times. And on the inside, we go from up to down. We step over the B, yeah, the B minus one, actually. So this here is the sigma corresponding to the step from TA minus one to TA for the forward rate L B minus one. Yeah, so this this for here is the B. So I would like to do this now and invert our analytic formula. This our analytic formula. Yeah, invert it analytically. So do not have an optimizer, invert it analytically. For the implementation, uh, this looks like complicated notation, but actually it's quite easy. What I need is on the left hand side, I have the sigma s a b squared times t a. And on the right hand side, I have actually the sum over all entries in my covariance matrix integrated over all time. Yeah, so actually a triple sum, uh, all k, all l and then integrated over all i, yeah, i from one to a. Um, so I would like to have a nice expression for all the guys where the guy that I'm looking for, so that one here, is not entering. So all the terms where all the other guys enter, and this is here my matrix GKL, GKL is a, a, a matrix for uh, the swap yeah, that starts in TA and ends in TB. So what's that? Okay, so you see what is in this matrix is all kinds of combinations K and L from A to 
P minus one. So these are all forward rates that are relevant for this swap rate, hmm, SAB. But inside only the integrals, so here are now the time integrals, I from one to A, that do not contain the guy that we are looking for. Okay, I will make a small um, diagram of this matrix on the next slide. Yeah, but you see um, when K is not equal to B minus one and L is not equal to B minus one. So you see this guy is not participating in this expression because it is the, for, the relevant forward rate is not contained. Then I integrate over the full interval from I equals one to A. Yeah? So from T zero to T capital T A, I integrate. Uh, but if any of the two is equal to B minus one, yeah, then I exclude this guy here. So I exclude I equals A. So I exclude the step from T A minus one to T A. So these are actually all the guys that we have here, except this one. And we also have a nice um, induction start. So for example, um, the G A, A plus one, so the, the swap starts in TA and it ends in the next period. So B is equal to A plus one. So it's just one period. So this is just the integrated forward rate volatility you know, over all time steps for this forward rate that is inside the swap. So LA, except the last one. And our first in the first value in the in the iteration in the induction, yeah, is of course uh, zero. So if I like to have all terms where the uh, sigma L1 from T0 to T1 is not contained here, yeah, then there is, is no element. Okay, so this is just a, a short notation to have all the other guys in a single letter, yeah, the G, K, L, A, B. So now having this, I can solve our little um, equation. So our little problem. So I step for the starting time of the swap from T1 to Tn. So this is my TA, the start of the swap. Then we have inside different forward rates, okay, and so on. And then we have the TB. The B runs then, okay, end is, the first end is one period after the start. It runs from A plus one to N. So the inner loop runs over all the ends. We pre-calculate the weights. Okay, our weights are just functions of the observed interest rate curve. And then we calculate X as the solution of X squared plus two times PX plus Q equals our given integrated swap rate Variance, yeah. So sigma SAB squared times TA. And what are P and Q now? So first have a look at the Q. If the time step is TI minus one to TI, where say I is not equal to the A then actually I need all covariance terms 
TK and uh, so sorry sigma k ti minus one to ti and sigma l ti minus one to ti. I need them, so so I integrate these guys up to time t a minus one. Yeah, these are all the previous forward rates, all the guys that are here in my little g. So this here is the q, all the guys that are here where this forward rate for which I'm solving is not part of this um, expression. And then there is the part in my covariance cube. And so it's a, it's a, it's a covariance cube because it is sigma k with a sigma l, but then integrated over time, yeah, so for different times. So it is sigma k from ta minus one to ta, and here it is sigma l ta minus one to ta. Where my uh, volatility parameter of interest could appear, and where is this guy? Okay, it's here in the corner. So there is my x squared. Yeah, actually, um, this guy that is sitting there is sigma b minus one multiplied with sigma b minus one, and then also multiplied with the weight w b minus one squared. So this guy will be the sigma b minus one squared t a minus one t a w b minus one squared. So this is this is the guy that contains this sigma that I would like to solve for, and then in my matrix there are other guys. Sigma k times sigma l uh, with the two weights that are also part of the q. There comes now into place that I have this this condition here: if k and l yeah, are not equal to b minus one, okay, then the g also contains the i equals a. Yeah, so this also part of the q. But then I also have here the P multiplied with the X. And I have this two times. So I also have here the P multiplied with the X. So you see now, if you take the sum over all these guys, you have X squared plus two times P times X plus Q. Yeah? These are all the covariance terms equals the swap rate covariance. So I have here my Q and my P multiplied with the X. So this is now the equation we have here in a slightly different form, swap rate covariance, forward rate covariances. Yeah, and surely I can solve this for the X. Okay, my solution for the X is X is minus P plus uh, the positive solution, square root of integrated swap rate variance plus P squared. Okay. This, this guy minus Q. Uh, so minus all the other stuff that we have already calibrated. Yeah, so it's the difference of the forward rate covariances that is under this, this square root. So this is my x. Okay, the x also contains the weight. Yeah, so if the x here contains the weight, I have to divide by the weight to get this 
Forward rate. Covid we are looking for. So I have a very nice, very fast analytic formula to get each sigma parameter for the forward rate, uh, one by the others by just solving this nice little uh, quadratic equation. So I can calculate the forward rate volatilities in instant, yeah, just from observing the swap rate volatilities. If you now look, for example, here at the special case where the correlation matrix, correlation matrix was given is equal to the identity. So I have the special case of a model that is fully decorrelated. So rho KL is equal to zero for K not equal to L. Yeah, then um, there are a few simplifications. Okay, what do you observe here? This here is the P that is all the forward rates that are multiplied with the forward rates that I'm looking for. So it contains the row K B minus one, but the K goes up to B minus two. Yeah, So it is this column here, everything that has a correlation with my uh, missing guy, but uh, the variance of that missing guy is here in this corner is the x squared. So this is the reason why I only go to b minus two here. So this will be equal to zero if the correlation is equal to zero. So the p will be equal to zero. And here I have a zero if k is not equal to L. Yeah. So my G is a diagonal matrix. So the Q simplifies a bit. Yeah. The Q is only the G KK, the variance of the forward rate LK integrated from T0 to um, TA. So my formula simplifies a little bit. The P is zero. So the guy that is in front of the square root is zero. So I just have the square root. And I have under the square root, the integrated swap rate variance minus the integrated forward rate variance. Yeah, so integrated here. from T0 to TA. So this corresponds if you go back to the integral and forget that we assume the piecewise constant. This is the sigma K of T squared DT. Yeah, but um, wait, there is an error, right? Yeah, there's, there is unfortunately an error, right? Because the k equals b minus one and i equals a, this guy is not part of the sum. So there is an error here on the slide. Yeah, I need to exclude the um, forward rate volatility for k equals b minus one and i equals a, yeah, because that guy is not part here of our uh, G, yeah, and it is the guy for which we have solved. So maybe I do it like that. I write here that this is for K not equal B minus one, and it is one less than I, less than A, yeah. So less or equal a minus one for k equals b minus one. Okay, so the last part is um, missing. Okay, then you take the swap rate, integrated swap rate variance, and you um, subtract this integrated forward 
variance, forward rate variance, and you get the forward rate yeah, volatility for your time step from TA minus one to TA for this forward rate TB minus one. Yeah, so that's that's the special case when the correlation yeah, is fully decorrelated. And this looks very familiar to us. Yeah, So this is very similar to what we did for the caplet. This was remark 232. Yeah? Maybe you remember this. We were asking the question, how can we choose the sigma function to calibrate um, caplets? And we were using a piecewise constant yeah, um, sigma function, but in the sense that we had the time homogeneous volatility function. Yeah? And that in that case, we could choose the sigma for this time interval, which corresponds for, to the caplet yeah, for uh, Li minus one. So from Ti minus one to Ti, we could choose it by taking the full integrated variance that should be used for that caplet minus the one that we already had from the previous uh, calibration steps. So very uh, similar formula. The only thing is that you see here, we go a kind of in um, a diagonal. Yeah. So for the caplets, it is that in the swaption matrix, the swaptions that lie on the diagonal are actually the caplets. Yeah? It is a swap that starts in TA and ends in TA plus one. Yeah? So the B is actually the TA plus one. So in, in that case, where the B is actually the A plus one, you see there is only one element here. K is equal to A. Yeah? So there is only one element. K is equal to A. So actually this sum here goes away. And you see it is just this integral from T0 to TA minus one. So it is this case here where I had typo, yeah, the integral where the last step is missing. So this caplet calibration yeah, looks a little bit like a special case yeah, for the case where uh, I only consider here the swaptions S A a plus one, yeah, those are one period swaptions. Okay, so this is a very nice algorithm. And you might think, okay, I, I don't like it because this guy here is only an approximation formula. Yeah, there is still here the approximation. So I have some parameter here that appears in my approximation formula. So either you can think of this parameter not being the right parameter. It's not uh, your integral of the sigma uh, k squared, or uh, you have here an approximation sign. Yeah, So uh, you are inverting an approximation formula. So that's maybe a bit yeah, unsatisfactory. But uh, this analytic formula is really good. And even if the approximation error would be say too large yeah, to provide a very good calibration, you can use this to find placingly fast a good starting value for a numerical optimizer. Because this, this inversion here is, is, is really fast. Yeah? So just uh, n squared times calculating this, this, this square root. It could be that the equation does not admit a solution. Yeah, So it could be that the volatility that we calculate is maybe negative. So if this equation does not admit a solution, yeah, what, 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 what's the problem? So there could be two reasons. First reason is that, let's take this example. The swap rate volatilities that you observe on the market are not consistent. So they have maybe some kind of arbitrage. Yeah? So maybe the volatility is too small. 
Mm -hmm. So it could be that here under the square root, you get something negative because maybe this guy here is too small. Or, yeah, your assumption on the Kali correlation was maybe wrong. Yeah, You see, this is the special case where I have zero correlation. So you subtract here this part. In the general case, I'm subtracting the Q, but inside my Q, there are many correlation terms. Yeah, The GKL is all these guys with the correlations. And you can make this smaller by using, for example, a negative correlation. You can make it larger by using um, a positive correlation. So it could be that this does not admit a solution because your assumption on the correlation was wrong. Yeah, I started here with assume that the correlation matrix is given. So you could try to maybe use a different correlation model and try to solve this problem again. So we have that starting with the given correlation model, the correlation influences yeah, if this quadratic equation has a positive solution or not. However, you can also just solve all forward rate covariances from the swap rate covariances. So you can also use this to solve for the correlation directly. So my assumption on the correlation is removed. I just assume that the forward rate tenor and the swap tenor agree. And then I define now the, well, cube of all swap rate covariances. So these are all swaps that starts at the same A, but then they end at different times. Yeah, So this is TA to TB and TA to TD. Yeah? So I observe at a certain time, yeah, all combinations of swap rate covariances. And by observing these, I can use these guys to solve for the forward rate covariances. So the covariance of the forward rate LK and LL. It's the same equation, our approximation formula on the left-hand side, swap rate covariance on the right-hand side, forward rate covariances. And actually you go in the same step yeah, on the outside, you go over the parameter L, you go forward in your exercise state of disruption, and then you have a covariance matrix that has to be mapped to another covariance matrix. And there is a nice little expression that you can solve this by considering the Cholesky decompositions. Yeah, so here's just the solution. Yeah? So you see that you define the matrices by stepping here over the time Ti minus one to Ti yeah, is the covariance matrix for this time step minus the covariance matrix you have observed in the previous time step. And if you now iteratively try to find these guys to match the covariance matrix that you observe in the swap rates, then this is a, yeah, Sim, sim, simple formula. Yeah? So just plug this formula in into the equation we had here and you see that this, this becomes a solution. Okay, so also here uh, it can happen that um, you don't, don't find a solution. In that case, maybe the market data uh, has some kind of arbitrage. And another option is that your model assumption that it is a log normal model yeah, is, is, is maybe wrong. Uh, that could also be, uh, I just presented to you here the 
formulas for our log normal model. Recall that what we did was uh, uh, we, we also derived this formula for a normal model. Uh, so it could also be that this um, assumption as well. Yeah, that was it for the bootstrapping.